if you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But with you is found forgiveness, O God of Israel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Amen. And God is good. And all the time, I welcome you to this Mass, this Eucharistic celebration this morning, 15th of October. And uh, today's Mass is uh, requested by three families that we want to pray for in a special way. The family of Mama Joan Odawa, the family of Anthony and Bernadette Degua, and the family of Ankabue. And these three families are asking that we join them to thank God for his love, perseverance, and protection over their families. They are praying for their children to achieve their God-given vocations and to always turn to God for direction in their lives. They are praying for those who are unwell in their families, that God may totally restore them and give them good health. They are praying that God may bless their work, their businesses, their projects, and open opportunities for them. They also offer this mass for the departed members of their families and their friends who have gone before them. May that God may rest their souls eternal peace. These and other intentions that each one of us has, we bring them to the altar of sacrifice Christ is inviting us to come uh, to him and bring all our intentions or that we want to ask for and he would provide for us. The word of God today invites us that we are visitors in the banquet feast of the Lord and the Lord has always been inviting us and is inviting us today in a special way in this Eucharistic celebration which is a banquet that Christ has prepared and is inviting us to come and to come as we are. Sometimes people in banquet feasts are invited and they turn down the invitation. For us, we are invited and the grace of God is abundant in our lives that we don't turn, uh, we, we, we don't turn down this invitation. We are invited to come as we are and benefit from the abundance of God's grace and draw from his table and our food uh, that will give us uh, everlasting happiness. For the many times we have turned down the invitation of God, for the many times the invitation has been extended to us and we have said no through the way we conduct ourselves, through the way we behave, by not keeping the commandments of God, love for him and love for one another. Let us ask for mercy and forgiveness so that this invitation may be a genuine one, we may be able to receive it, and God may be able to gift us in this banquet celebration that we are back this morning. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting.
let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray at all times, go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, we pray, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. The first reading, a reading from the book of Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of fat things, a feast of choice wines, of fat things full of marrow, of choice wines well refined. And he will destroy on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces and the reproach of his people. He will take away from all the earth for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. For the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. The word of the Lord. A response is In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for length of days unending. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for length of days unending. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me, he revives my soul. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for length of days unending. He got in the Lord's own house shall I dwell for length of days unending. He guides me along the right path for the sake of his name. Though I should walk in the valley of the shadow of death, no evil would I fear, for you are with me. Your crook and your staff will give me comfort in the Lord's own house shall I dwell for length of days unending. You have prepared a table before me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for length of days unending. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for length of days unending. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for length of days unending. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brethren, I know how to be abased and I know how to be abound. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and want. 
I can do all things in him who strengthens me, yet it was kind of you to share my trouble, and my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Jesus Christ. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Please rise up for the other day. the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our hearts that we might know what is the hope to which he has called us. saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a marriage feast for his son and sent his servants to call those who were invited to the marriage feast. But when, but they would not come. Again, he sent other servants saying, Tell those who are invited, Behold, I have made ready my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the marriage feast. But they made light of it and went off, one of his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his servants, treated them shamefully, and killed them. The king was angry, and he sent his troops and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore to the streets and invite the, to the marriage feast as many as you find. And those servants went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both bad and good, though the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to look at the guests, he saw there a man 
who had no wedding garment, and he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot, and cast him into the outer darkness, where there would be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. and sisters who have come to a reflection, a homily based on our readings today, today being the 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time, Year A. And the theme of our Sunday today is a Banquet Feast of the Lord. Banquet Feast of the Lord the theme comes very close to the first reading today, the responsorial psalm and the gospel. We had in the first reading from the book of Isaiah that God prepared a banquet feast on the mountain of the Lord. We are invited all to come and share in the feast of choice wine, of fat things full of marrow, of choice wine well refined. An image of a big celebration, an image of a celebration of love, a banquet of abundance, a banquet of salvation. And that's the same theme that recurs in the gospel today when Jesus compares the kingdom of God with that king who prepared a big feast and invited all types of people to come and be part of the feast. This feast is likened to our celebration of the Eucharist, that which we are celebrating today, because the Eucharist is a banquet feast that Jesus Christ, our Master, has prepared for us and he has invited each one of us, all of us, young and old, lay and religious, men and women, all are invited to come and partake of this banquet of love, banquet of abundance, banquet that Jesus Christ has prepared for us. And the qualification is to be able to listen to the invitation and to respect the invitation and come and be part of that banquet. We are sharing already that banquet through the breaking of the word, and soon we are going to join Jesus on his table as he shares this choice of wines, of fat things full of marrow, a choice of wines well refined for us, which is the Eucharist that will be the bread and wine that will be transformed into the body and blood of Christ through the prayer of consecration. Jesus has been talking about the kingdom of God. We are coming towards the end of the liturgical year and our mind and our spirit is being, uh, uh, is, 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 is being prepared for the last days the days when the Lord will want to win us 
uh, and get us back to him. And so the word of God is also prepared in such a way that it prepares us for those last days when we shall have the culmination of those small banquet feasts that we have had here on earth, having the banquet feast in the eternal kingdom of God. And Jesus is talking about the kingdom of God using different parables. The Sunday before last Sunday, we had Jesus talking about the kingdom of God, likening it with um, uh, a father who sent out two of his sons to go and do something in the vineyard and they were, sub they were supposed to give an answer uh, of yes or no and we heard that some said yes, did not go and others, another one said no and he actually went and last Sunday we had the gospel of also uh, this man who had uh, many tenants uh, or to take care of his property and he gave them uh, part of the, the, the property to take care of and he went away and when he came back uh, he wanted of course them to give back and he sent his servants to go and collect what is due to him and uh, we know we heard what happened that all those tenants, all those servants who had been sent, they were killed, they were rejected, uh, until the, the king decided uh, to send his own son, and also the son was, uh, uh, was killed, again to show how uh, unprepared uh, those tenants were, because they did not want to, to give what is due to the master, and they just wanted to misuse what does not belong to them. Uh, and uh, today, uh, in a similar note, Jesus is talking about this invitation to the banquet feast, where um, a, a king prepared a, a feast and he sent uh, people to go and invite others uh, to come to this feast. And we are told that those who had the invitation, they did not come. Uh, instead, they went the business of their days. Some went to their, to their fields, others went uh, you know, to do their own things, uh, others were, started even killing their servants and maiden servants. And so uh, people did not take serious the invitation to their banquet. And the king got angry and instead he extended that invitation to people who did not deserve it at first, people who are not meant for that. And when you look at these three parables that I've talked about, Jesus has a message uh, to the chief priests and the elders, because when Jesus was preaching, he had a lot of confrontation with chief priests and elders and the Pharisees, who sometimes thought that the kingdom of God was uh, given on a, a silver plate for them and it was made for them. They knew everything, they knew the law, uh, they did not need to do anything and even the kingdom of God uh, and everything was uh, pre uh, preserved for the few, uh, for the Jews. And Jesus wanted to teach them that yes, God had given an opportunity to the Israelites, to, you, to, to them, uh, to receive the kingdom of God, to be the first heirs of the kingdom of God, but they have rejected it. They have not taken it serious. And he was telling them that when those to whom it is meant do not take it serious, God is a God of all, is a God of all nations. He will extend that kingdom even to others. And that the kingdom of God is not necessarily for those to whom it is meant at first. It is for those who make themselves to deserve by uh, understanding the will of God, the will of the Father, and doing according to it. That is the message that Jesus has been wanting to communicate to the chief priests, to the elders, and to us today, that yes, the kingdom of God is open to us, the invitation is open to us, but what happens if we don't accept the invitation? What happens if we are not ready to, uh, to live according to the dictates of that kingdom? What happens when people have been invited to share the kingdom of God, but they have made themselves unworthy through the way they conduct themselves by not following the commandments of God? Jesus is saying that that kingdom will be taken away from them 
and given to those who deserve. And that's why in the gospel today, Jesus is saying those who deserve, those who had the invitation cards, because they turned down the invitation, uh, then the master ordered that others would be invited. And they were invited and they came. And in fact, those who were invited and did not come, we are told they were even punished by the king because he was very hungry. How can you prepare a banquet feast and uh, uh, with all what it takes and you have invited people, they have said yes and they don't come. Uh, the king would definitely feel bad and feel offended. This is our God whenever he invites us and he has invited people and they turn down the invitation. But then the invitation will be extended to others who maybe were not prepared or maybe those who do not deserve, of course, according to the, uh, to the way how the Jews looked at them. But that is also something very important that even for those who are invited uh, the second time uh, after, after those who are invited refuse, even for them, it is not just a cup of tea. That's why we are told today that uh, those who are invited after the others rejected, they came in and one of them was discovered that he did not have the right garment. He did not have the right garment and we are told that he was sent away, he was uh, punished uh, and he was even uh, um, uh, 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 rejected uh, because according to the master, he was not supposed to take to participate in the banquet feast. So even for, for all of us who are invited to the banquet feast, yes, the invitation is extended to us, is ex extended to each one of us without any discrimination, but it is required that we come with the right garment. It is required that we wear the right garment so that we can be able to fit in the banquet feast. And what is this right garment? Uh, the right heart, the right uh, attitude towards God, the ability to understand the will of God and to follow his commandments. These are the garments that we are supposed to put on so that we can be able to fit uh, in the wedding feast of uh, Jesus Christ. Sometimes, just like the first people, we are invited, the invitation is extended to us and we give all kinds of reasons. We want to go the business of our days. We want to do things our own way. We don't want to, uh, to, to love God, to love neighbor. We don't want to leave the commandments of God. That way we make ourselves unworthy for the banquet feast because we do not have the right, bang, uh, the right garment. And that is what Jesus is telling us today, that in as much as we are invited and it is, uh, there is no discrimination, all of us have a place around the temple, temple of the Lord, but we are supposed to put on the right garment. And that is what we need to, uh, to uh, reflect and find out whether, uh, even as we sit here, even as we walk, you know, our way of Christian life, whether we consider having the right garment, whether we are, we are fit uh, to be with Jesus around his table in the celebration of the banquet feast. And we want to pray in the mass of today that we may always make sure that we have the right garment, that we wear a heart of love, a heart of compassion, a heart that loves God and loves the neighbor, and then with that we'll be able to fit in the banquet feast of our Master and our Lord Jesus Christ. Today we are told to reflect about um, uh, three things. One, the invitation, that the invitation is open, that God has invited each one of us, he continues to invite us, and we don't want to put a block to anyone because all of us have been invited. All of us have a place uh, in God's uh, house. All of us have a place around the table of the banquet feast of our Lord Jesus Christ. The invitation is extended to each one of us. And secondly, it is in the initiative of God from the very beginning, the history of salvation is about God taking initiative. In the first reading, God took initiative to call the people of Israel, and he continued to take the initiative even when they went astray, even when they fell short of God's grace, 
God took initiative to go after them and follow them. And the same, Jesus continues to take that initiative to invite us uh, to the banquet feast. But then uh, the question is, our, what is our place? What is our role? Uh, do we embrace the invitation? And do we understand that it is the initiative of God? And do we uh, respond? How do we respond to the invitation of our Lord Jesus Christ in our lives? What kind of excuses do we give? What kind of other activities do we embrace that sometimes take the place of the invitation of our Lord Jesus Christ? Jesus is telling us that if God invites us and we don't take the invitation serious, of course, uh, he could easily get angry with us and extend the invitation to others and we shall forfeit uh, being part of the banquet uh, feast of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is a warning, it is a caution, it is a call, it is an invitation for us to embrace the invitation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us ask for the grace of God uh, to be positive and to respond positively to the invitation of Jesus so that we may be part of his troop and now in this world and later in the kingdom of God. The Lord be with you. Let us arise and profess our faith. I believe in one God, God, God invites us to his banquet of life. Let us ask this generous Father for all our needs. That the church on earth may thrive and grow and draw many to the feast of the kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. that rich and poor alike may not make excuses to evade the call to the kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that through our apostolic efforts, we may provide the hungry with their share of God's bounty. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that we may be found worthy to come to the supper of the Lamb of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that the dead may live in the house of the Lord and rejoice in the banquet of eternal life. 
especially those members of our parish and our friends and family that have gone before us. Let us pray to the Lord. With all the intentions that have remained the, in the bottom of our hearts, let us pray through the intercession of Mother Mary as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, full of grace. Most generous Father, you call us to share your bounty. As we pray for others, help us to bring them with us to that banquet set forth by your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever.
that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord us Accept, O Lord, with the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Jesus. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being, and while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Father most holy, for you are great and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care, so that in serving you alone the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And even when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death. For you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. 
Time and again you offered them covenants, and through the prophets you taught them to look forward to, this, to salvation. And you so love the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you send your only begotten Son to be our Savior. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, you shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor you proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the fruit, first fruits of those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father Most Holy, having loved his own who are in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the near and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. He is As we now celebrate the memory of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church and grant that in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant, Francis, our Pope, Philip, Archbishop, and the whole order of bishops or the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you this morning, 
your entire people and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember us, all those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grand or merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and with the apostles and saints in your kingdom. There, with the whole creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all oh, that is good. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, O oh, glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever to the Father. The Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy you may be always free from sin and safe from our distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, we say to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be always with you. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Christ Jesus, the Lamb of God, beyond him who takes away the sins of the world, happy are we who are invited to his banquet. Body and blood of Christ bring us to life everlasting.
prayer. Prayer after communion. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, run through my veins. Water flowing from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O oh good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Let me not be separated from you. From the evil enemy, defend me. At the hour of death, call me. And bid me to come to you, that with your saints I may praise you for all eternity. Amen. When the Lord appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy blood, body and blood of your Son, so you may make us share us of his divine nature. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we be seated for the announcements.
St. John the Evangelist, Holy Ghost Parish, Announcements, 15th October, 2023, the 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time, Year A. The first announcement, marriage announcement between Edwin Osiani, son of the late David Okuta, and Belgona Akinyi. He would like to marry Laureen Nalemba, daughter of Ernest Abene and Gladys Abene. Their marriage ceremony will be on 21st October here at the parish. Anyone with any objection should inform the parish priest. This is the third notice. The second announcement. There will be adoration of our Lord Jesus Christ in the Holy Eucharist today at 3.30 p.m. here in the parish. All are encouraged to come and adore Christ together. The third announcement, all youths aged 14 to 26 years have their mass today at the Spiritan Chapel at 11.30 a.m. The fourth announcement, all children under 13 years will have their mass today at 11.30 in the parish main hall. All parents with children in this age bracket are kindly requested to accompany them in that Mass. The fifth announcement. Coming Sunday is Mission Sunday. We shall have a second collection in all Masses. This is a universal appeal where all Christians participate in the missionary activity of the Church. The sixth announcement. Archbishop Philip Agnolo of Nairobi Archdiocese is wish, wishing success to all candidates sitting for their KCSC, KCPE, and KPSEA this year. They are all requested to proceed in front for their for blessings. The seventh announcement, all CWA Information Class 1 will have a day of recollection this coming Saturday, 21st October, starting at 9 a.m. in the parish hall to prepare for their commissioning. The eighth announcement, church group meetings today are as follows. St. Jude Tadeus Jumuya, 11 a.m. at the Lyke Community. CWA Beige Cell, 11 a.m. room number six. Development Committee, 11 a.m. room number two. Upendo Choir, 11 a.m. room number one. Sacred Heart of Jesus Devotional Group, 11 a.m. The ninth announcement, small Christian community masses this week are as follows. St. Francis of Assisi on Friday, 20th October at Mr. and Mrs. Pascal Kiyoko's home at 4 p.m. St. Jose Maria Escriva Jumuya on Saturday, 21st October at the home of Edel Maringo at 10 a.m. Tenth announcement. The Father in Charge, Father Patrick Mania, invites all laymen to a morning of prayer, that's a pilgrimage, to Kumbi Prayer Garden, and thereafter to Ambuzi Eating, in order to reconnect on Saturday, 11th November. For logistics and planning purposes, men are called upon to register either outside the church or with the CMA chair, Mr. Karume, not later than 31st October. The 11th announcement, self-health group members are inviting new and old members to pick registration forms from the parish secretary's office. 12th announcement, YCA, in partnership with the Ajira Digital Program, driven by the Ministry of ICT, Innovation and Youth Affairs, is organizing a one-day training on 4th November from 9.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Please visit the notice board outside for registration and more information. We thank all those who animated Mass today. May God bless you abundantly. Mass animations next Sunday, 22nd October are as follows. 7 a.m. Community, 9 a.m. CWA, 11.30 a.m. BVC, 
5 p.m. St. Augustine. We have a special announcement from the PPC Executive Council. God is good and all the time. Yeah. The announcement is uh, in relation to the last mile. Uh, around uh, August, around 28th there, I think we came in uh, to ask the church to support on the pending bills uh, that relates to the chapel. And um, we had um, we came up with categories on how we are going to manage the collection to gather the money that was required to take care of the pending bills. So today it's our responsibility to come back and give feedback because it's, I feel it's important to give you that feedback because we all participated. So I'll, um, I'll just give a, a quick uh, a summary of how we participated. We had the, the small Christian communities uh, we had other groups, exclusion groups, and also there was a guest dinner that was on the 1st of September, uh, also second collection, and coupons. On, um, <coughs> on the second collection, uh, we managed to get um, 125,418 against a target of 7 million. So the performance there was around 2%. On the coupons, we had a target of 100,000. Uh, we managed to sell uh, 47,000. That gave us a, a performance of 47%. And um, on the small Christian communities, if you allow me just to announce very quick, uh, St. Francis gave us 137,000. 600 against 150 target, so they did 92 percent. St. Michael uh, gave the charge 150,000 against 60,000, 60, so they did over 250 percent. St. Cecilia gave 27,600,000 uh, against 60. Uh, St. Mary, out of 60,000, they gave us 52,000. St. Teresa of Calcutta uh, contributed 36,000 out of 150. St. Anne gave 300,000 out of 150,000, so a performance of 200%. St. Dominic gave 60,000 out of 150,000. St. Uh, Padre, uh, Padre Pio, 47,000 out of 60,000. St. Jude, 2,000 out of 60,000. St. Teresa of Child Jesus, 62,000 out of 150,000. St. Claire, uh, 62,000 out of 150. St. Jose Maria, 50,000 out of 150. St. Monica, 60,000 out of 60,000 by our target. St. Augustine, 60,000 out of 150. So the total collection from the small Christian community was 1,106,200. Again, so that gave us a performance of 71% of our target. On other groups, which allow me to announce, YCA gave us 40,000 out of 60, CMA 500,000 out of 500,000, CWA 331,600 out of 500,000. The PPC executive that I present gives 250,000 out of 150. Then uh, C, C, okay, C, CJPC gave, um, didn't give, give contribution. Lecturers Ministry, they were just formed, didn't give any contribution. Sacred Heart of Jesus did not. Then sent, uh, sent, uh, the, the prayer group, which is uh, the spirit and prayer group, gave. Um, 50,000 
200. The lay Carmelites, 220,000 out of 60. Lay Spirit and Associate, 20 out of 60. Blessed Voice Choirs, 60 out of 60. St. John Widows, 27,000 out of 60. St. John Prayer Group, 6,500. So from the, from the intellectual groups, we managed to collect 1.3, no, 1,305,300. 1, 1, that was 70% performance. And um, we had also the guest dinner, which I mentioned 1st of September. The guest dinner gave us, um, we had a target of 3 million. And uh, however, we collected 2.9, 2,977,800. And that was 99% performance. So that was uh, the guest dinner that we had. Uh, if you add all this, uh, we managed to collect uh, 5 million, 561,816. And um, that gave us a 41% uh, overall. We had a, a dinner expense because we are, when we are hosting the dinner, we had some expenses. The expense was 247. 1,820, that gives us a net uh, contra, uh, uh, fundraising of 5,313,996. So the pending bills that we had was around uh, 13 million uh, that, uh, that triggered the, the, this discussion of the last mile. Um, out of the, the pending bills, which I'll read, uh, we had the marble, which was at 3.3 million. We already cleared that balance. Uh, Jingxing, we had 1.5 million that has been cleared. Uh, Jingxing retention, 700,000 has been cleared. The interiors of the chapel, 100,000 has been cleared. Uh, we had the church pews, which was standing at 7 or 6,000. However, were additional that um, were done, additional work were done. The, the pending bill is 909,000, not been cleared. And then we have the church extension, uh, 594,000 has been cleared. Church retention, 700,000, not had, we have not cleared that. Plumbing works, 107 cleared. Uh, the PA sound system, 530,000 has been cleared. Archdiocese, 1.6 million was paid. The Western Binary cleared. Uh, the architect, Muli, 214 was cleared. The stores, 150 was cleared. The spirit turn amount was 350, is zero as we speak. The, the parish, new cars. We had uh, two vehicles for the parish, and the, the pending bill there was 2.7 million. It has been cleared. So far, what is pending from the 13 million is 1.619859. However, with the church pews, we are always at the, uh, the St. Paul, the, the, uh, the, uh, the Paul Woodworks, and we negotiated to pay the 900,000 in five installments. So we may not need to fundraise for that. Uh, the same will apply to the 700,000 for the church retention. And um, we had um, a special donations also from uh, two families, uh, Paul Cairo, and Paul Wangururo. Uh, they donated 420,000 for the statute of St. John, the evangelist that is out here. If you go, uh, just go around, you'll find it's a new one, and um, you may um, just do your prayer there. Um, I think that's the, the, the last part of this. However, I just need to mention uh, a special contribution from St. Teresa of the Child Jesus. This is a, a small Jumia, and I think uh, they did a pretty good job. Uh, the same applies to St. Jude, where they contributed 2,000 out of 60,000. That was really special to me. And also the St. John Widows. This is a group of uh, sickly women, and um, very old women, out of 60,000, they managed to contribute 27,000. So that was also very special. However, we thank God for the contributions we received from the parishioners and um, through the goodwill that you had to the church. I, I, it's my prayer that you continue doing that and may God bless you. 
and um, your families and everyone else that contributed to the last mile. Thank you. So thank you very much our treasurer, Mr. Kibiwot, uh, for that, representing the PPC executive. Thank you, parishioners, for supporting that last mile, as you can see. Yes, as you can see, we came to you and you supported, and we are uh, way, uh, we have made a, a great milestone, and we thank God for us, for that. We thank you all. We thank everyone, every family, every individual who gave a contribution towards that. It is for our church. It is our, there are our projects. The chapel is really a nice place of prayer that all of us uh, can go there and worship. And many have been coming to make use of it. So we are really proud of it, proud of what we've done. And we continue to ask God to continue blessing us, blessing uh, our parish and uh, our parishioners. We I want to invite the candidates who are sitting for their exams uh, this year. The Archbishop reminded us to pray for our candidates, to bless them, and to wish them well. So candidates for exam this year, KCPE, KCSC, or whatever exam that you are going to do, if you are a candidate, please come forward for a special prayer. So I want to pray for them and ask God to bless them, to walk with them, to grant them the Spirit, the Holy Spirit and His gifts, especially the gift of understanding, gift of wisdom, the gift of retention, and the gift of success. God, our loving Father, we thank you for the gift of these, our children, our candidates, they have walked the journey of preparing themselves for exam through the education that they have received. You have called them and you have worked with them. You have granted them the good health of mind and body. The reason why they stand here to thank you as to seek for your blessings. We extend our hands upon them and ask for your blessings upon each one of them. May you grant them success. May the Holy Spirit come upon them. And may you uh, always be with them this time and around the time they're going to sit for exam. May they feel the warmth. May they feel the support. May they feel also uh, the, the energy and the enthusiasm to be able to give back through writing their exam of what they have learned. And may they emerge to be successful in their exams so that they may become the pride of their family, the pride of the church, the pride of society. And tomorrow they may become the builders of this church and society. And may your blessings, Almighty God, come upon them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let us arise and ask for God's blessings. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless and protect you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended.
thank you very much for your participation in this uh, celebration. So for me, uh, we are going to the Cup Gym Trial to play for Ghana Sunday morning.